wonderful thing about the virtual world is that you feel that you are both connected to the entire universe and all alone at the same time. So I'm hoping that the smile or the ebullient smile that I see on your face means that you can hear me right now. Excellent. Um, I, I, I want to say, first of all, uh, what a pleasure it is to be asked to, uh, to, to speak to, to this um, august organization or this all people that I hear today. Um, you know, often, often when people ask you know, ask me to speak, the first question is always why, um, and and actually Jim answered that by by kind of saying that he sees a link in creativity, purpose, meaning, and culture. You know, th and it applies to every aspect of society particularly right now on a morning like this morning where no matter where you are politically, um, one, one either is, I don't know, keeping their fingers crossed or one is uh, deeply mindful of, of the tricks that, that life can throw at us. Um, you know, creativity and imagination is, is, is everything. We're in a moment in history, I think, where, where we cannot rely on, on any past orthodoxies. Every past orthodoxy is simply there as a reference point to help guide us through this portal on this, the first day of lockdown. And so I, I, I speak about purpose, meaning and culture and, and the way that it relates to my, my game uh, um, as a narrative creator, as a curator of, of, of art. And in theater, it plays out a little like this, that our job is to slightly attempt to ride the zeitgeist. Nobody really knows what the zeitgeist is. No one could have predicted the exact date of Me Too or the Arab Spring or Black Lives Matter. But as a curator of a space for artists, for talent, we have to sit there and look deeply at the trends. And then analyze what might, what might catalyze deeper reflection, what might catalyze change, what might just entertain in a way that would allow people to feel good about themselves and get to tomorrow. All of those responsibilities, they fall upon us. We narrative creators, we curators of the artistic space. But none is as important actually as our reliance on discovering new talent, on nurturing new talent. There is a underlying belief structure that just around the corner is the next big star. And I don't mean star in terms of someone that we worship, but I mean the star is in someone whose contribution to our world can serve more than just the review pages of, of our newspapers that can actually provoke change, but at least reflection. I mean, I, I don't want to sound evangelical, but for me, theater is, is the 21st century church. I say that because we go in to that space and we wait for a word. We wait for the word to be given to us so that we can think about that word and use that word in order to motivate us through the next week. And we do it communally. We, we sit with others and we see how the frequency and the vibration and the energy of the message sent through the three-dimensional form of the human being, how it lands on us and how it lands on our companions who we may not know, but we have shared. If the play works, we have shared something together. We have taken it in together. And that of course is born out of the imagination of the artists who come together to help us commune. And again, again, I'm, I'm using these big words, commune. I mean, these big words, these evangelical church of the 21st century, but I believe profoundly right now, it is incumbent upon us all to have faith, hold on to the truths that we know, but also be ready to change as soon as the argument lands in our spirit and soul that tells us this is the direction of travel. The 
palace of the imagination, I often say, doesn't sit within a theater, but it sits within the mind of those who choose to come into that space and partake with us. Um, theater is, is a nonlinear abstract art form. If I say to you in a television or film, hey, I'm in Paris, you, uh, you, you wanna see the Eiffel Tower or something like that in the background. In the black box, in the magic of theater, I simply have to say to you, I'm in Paris and your mind does the work for me. That is the power of the imagination of the audience. And so I use that to select the work that I think should go before our audiences. I'm, I'm really proud. There was a moment just before lockdown where, and I say this not to self-aggrandize, but to say why I think that everything we do is not just about ourselves or our individual sectors, but actually is about society. There was a moment when we had a play on Broadway and we had a play in the West End, Death of a Salesman. And we had a Pulitzer Prize winning play in our main house. And we had a play playing prisons and homeless shelters, touring Southwark and Lambeth mm -hmm. where we work. And for me, that was my proudest mm -hmm. moment of being an artistic director because it meant that we were serving every demographic that we possibly could. And as I speak to you today, I'm really mindful that one might go, what is the link between theater and HR? Well, for me, the link is we are serving. We are looking at the potential of everyone and we are trying to explode that potential. We are bringing new energies and new life forms almost into our organizations, not just to revolutionize them because I don't fully believe in revolution. I believe in sustained and accelerated evolution. That way it doesn't keep turning on itself but it keeps growing. My job as an artistic director is to keep bringing in that blood to keep us evolving while holding on to the wisdom and the successes of those who have had experience and can negotiate with our audiences probably in a more familiar way. And it's the combination of the wisdom of those who have been in our game for a while and the energy and new vision of the young emerging people that I think creates a vibrant sector. And so I would say that to you. I would ask the question to you that I ask to myself every day, which is how, how are you negotiating tomorrow? How are you bringing the right people to the table, sometimes against all orthodoxies. How are you bringing those people? Are you bringing those people into your organizations that can create sustained evolution? And when you bring those people in, how are you looking after them? How are you caring for them? How are you making it so that their voice, their legitimate voice, comes through without them feeling the bandwidth tax of being alone, of being the new, of being possibly from a community that may not have had access to this part of your organization before. I say I am a, I'm a hardwired optimist who believes in the power of the human imagination to supersede nearly every circumstance. I believe profoundly in the need for human beings to interact with each other, to commune with each other, and to improve each other through that interaction. Having a discussion like this today is about all of us having moments to introspect and then share our wisdoms with everyone else that might want to listen. And so in the 53 seconds I have left, as I see flashing up here. I, 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 wanna, I wanna thank you for inviting me to just share these thoughts. But most importantly, I leave you with the challenge. One of my favorite sayings, I have two favorite sayings. History is like a foreign land. They do things differently there. Our children will not know our dispensation. They will not know the world that we 
inherited. They will only know the world that we have given to them. And we have to make sure that the world that we give to them is one that we can stare at ourselves in the mirror and say, I did all I could do to serve my country, to serve my community, to serve my sector in the best way possible. Thank you. Can't hear you, Tim. Thank you, Kwame. That was absolutely amazing. Um, appreciate it. And it wouldn't be an online conference if someone didn't start talking without unmuting themselves. So I'm glad that we've nailed that one already from the bingo, right? But essentially, I was saying while I was muted, thank you so much for sharing that. And I think in my head, not only have I been transported to my motherland of Jamaica uh, in that foreign land, my first question is actually for you, in order to navigate those um, orthodoxies that you talked about, as a leader yourself, I'm going to throw the question back to you. How have you ne negotiated that? As one of the first black leaders of a theatre company, how have you done that yourself? I, 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 I think, Tim, I, 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 I seldom ever think about myself in terms of, um, of firsts. Uh, though I may have achieved a few of them, um, I, you know, I think glass ceilings are there to, to be broken. And once you've broken them, you don't, you shouldn't look back at Amen. it. Um, but but I, I, I think it's lonely, Tim. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's lonely. And I think it is about building a team around you that constantly keep you on your toes, but also um, making sure that the loved ones around you um, are, are buffeted enough to be able to come home and, and, and accept you going, oh, I feel so lonely um, and, and give you enough love to help you through. Um, but, but it's about the team. It's about making sure that your team know what you want, the direction that you're traveling in, that sometimes your orthodoxy may be new to them mm. and that you just have to keep on explaining and trying to be as communicative as possible about direction of travel and why it's important to you, why you have the North Star that you have. And from a, from a personal perspective, you've already mentioned the love of what you do and injecting love into the work that you do. What is your vision, not just for the arts, but I'd love you to touch on that, given the tumultuous times that you've gone through and the vocal speeches you've got about how important the arts is, but what is your hope for the change that we need to see within our corporate organizations as a fellow leader? My, my, my hope is that our KPIs um, in the next year and the next two years um, absolutely underline that we heard, we listened and we acted. That is my hope for this moment. My hope is that um, many people of color across the world right now are going through, an, an, going through actually a lot of extra pressure. They can see that doors are opening and they're going, but it's going to close. It's on a hinge. It's going to close any minute now. I've Rush. got to get through. I've got to do more work. I've got to get. And, and I think actually what society can do is prove to people of color that we've heard this time. We are going to find the way to make sure that in five years time, history is like a foreign land we can't even remember. We don't even know what, how we got here, but our offices, that our structures are reflective of our countries and of where we want our country to go and where we want our companies to be as opposed to where they were. Let's not hark about yesterday. Let's concentrate on the brilliant new tomorrow that we will create so that our children don't have to have this discussion. And in 20 seconds, are you optimistic about that dawn becoming a reality? I am. I have to be, otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. I, I have to be, I, I, I'm optimistic in the 15 seconds left that I will say, because I have seen the brilliance from the communities that want to knock at the door. And I've seen the generosity of, in the communities of those who say, I will now open the door. I am absolutely optimistic. Now is the time to prove our children that we're brilliant. 
Kwame Kromar, thank you so very much. I know that we'll be talking to you later in a forum where we've got a panel of conversation. So many of the guests who would be feeling that this was such a short snippet to get an insight into your mind will be privileged to know that you'll be in one of the sessions later. But from me and from the audience at Future Talents 20, thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts with us. Much appreciate and we shall it see you soon. Be beautiful to be with you, my brother. Beautiful to be with you. Thank you.